Hello friends, have you ever wondered why an autistic child does not attend when you are calling their name or giving them instructions? Even sometimes when you are calling them from a close distance, they are still not responding. Let me give you two very common reasons and how to correct them. A big challenge for autistic children is auditory filtering. What is that? If there are too many sounds in the environment combined with multiple people trying to talk to them at the same time, it is difficult for them to filter out exactly which sound to focus on. It means that your child will not be able to filter out all the background noises. If two people are trying to instruct them at the same time, they don't know whose voice to focus on and how to shift their attention really fast so that they can attend to both stimulations. Similarly, if you think that the same person is continuously talking to them, again auditory filtering becomes problem because their processing is also slow. So if you have told them, let's put this block in the box. Let's do it fast. Why you not doing it? Pick it up, pick it up fast. It becomes multiple instructions for them and difficult to follow. In order to improve auditory filtering in a child, let us learn the five main steps to follow. Step number one, whenever you are trying to interact with your autistic child, try to work one on one with them. At that time, try to ensure that they are possibly no or minimal background noises that can distract them. Second step, also within this one-to-one -one approach, try to give one instruction at a time. Wait for at least 10 seconds before you repeat the instruction. Also in this, you need to be careful that you don't give multiple instructions like, let's put the block in the box, Let's pick up the yellow block first. No, 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 don't put it in the box. Let us keep it in our hand. Show me the yellow block and then put it in the box. So already it was a one step activity, just putting the block in the box and you turn it into a multiple step. Second main step. There is a difference between a general background noise and sudden sounds. Most of the people would say our child is auditory defensive because they react to sounds like the whistle of a pressure cooker, a blender sound, a vacuum cleaner sound. Why? Because these sounds are sudden sounds. They start suddenly, make a really loud noise and then they go away, which disturbs the focus of the child. But if there is a continuous background sound, then the child seems to be okay with that or might get distracted for a few seconds and then goes back to the activity, making it part of a background noise that is continuously there. So try to avoid these kinds of sounds specifically when you're doing activities with the child. Step number three, help them learn the location or the source of the sound. So you can try to help them understand what are the different kind of sounds that will come? So for example, the whistle sound of a pressure cooker, the blender is about to go, the washing machine will vibrate, any such sudden sound or the vacuum cleaner is suddenly going to go on or off. So if you prepare them for that sound saying like, okay, let's stop for two minutes because we are going to have this sound, but the sound will be there in the background. Do not try to ask them to continue to do the activities. It is okay if they stop for those 10 seconds. Help them in their self-regulation, sensory regulation, and then they can continue it. Step number four. Even if there are multiple people interacting with the child at the same time, so it could be both the parents, one parent and a sibling, one parent and a grandparent, or a parent and a therapist, Try that you one of you only talks at one time so that the child is not confused. Try not to repeat each other's instructions. So if the therapist has given one instruction, the parent needs to wait for the child to finish it. And then when the parent initiates, the therapist needs to be quiet also because it's not about the therapist should be the only one talking. The child should learn to respond to both of them. So this way you can modify the activity to 
one part of the activity is taken only by the parent and the second part of the activity only by the therapist. And finally, step number five, if you're taking your child to any noisy environment where you are sure there are going to be multiple sounds and it is difficult for the child to respond to your verbal instructions, try to use noise canceling headphones. Simultaneously, also try to talk to the child verbally, but also try to gesture them at the same time because I cannot emphasize it enough. They are really good visual learners. So if you tell, let us go from here and show them with a hand gesture, they are more likely to follow you rather than just telling them repeatedly and pulling their hand in one direction. Please try to work with your autistic child for improving and regulating their auditory filtration and help them to focus better in their activities. And also, if you found this video informative, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos related to autism awareness acceptance and for child development. Ring the bell icon for notifications when my videos are out. Add any comments, queries or suggestions in the comments below and we'll meet again soon. Bye.